So Lindsey Graham was on Fox News with Chris Wallace this morning, and not only did he defend Trump again in a truly pathetic, groveling fashion, but he actually suggested that the next step is to impeach Kamala Harris. Well, let me ask you about one person that he might be mad at, and tell me if he is or he isn't, <laughs> Mitch McConnell, who, who made a, 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 a yeah. curious speech yesterday in which he basically yeah. said the president is guilty, but that uh, the, the yeah. Senate doesn't have the power to, uh, to convict, to act against a former president. Yeah. Uh, what did he think of McConnell's speech? What did you think of McConnell's speech? Well, number one, I was a bit surprised, but I heard this in 1998. I was, I've been in three of the four impeachments. I, I'm sorry about that. But uh, the bottom line, in 1998, you had a lot of Democrats acquit Clinton, but got on the floor and, say, and said how bad he was. So, you know, Nancy Pelosi called us all cowards. I don't think most Republicans care what she thinks. Now, I think Senator McConnell's speech, he got a load off his chest, obviously. But unfortunately, he put a load on the back of Republicans. That speech you will see in 2022 campaigns, I would imagine if you're a Republican running in uh, Arizona or Georgia or New Hampshire, where we have a chance to take back the Senate, they may be playing Senator McConnell's speech and asking you about it as a candidate. And I imagine if you're an incumbent Republican, there are going to be people asking you, will you support Senator McConnell in the future? So I like him. Senator McConnell, he worked well with President Trump. I think his speech is an outlier regarding how Republicans feel about all this. I thought the impeachment trial was not only unconstitutional. I condemn what happened on January the 6th, but the process they used to impeach this president was an affront to rule of law. He's the first president to ever impeached, be impeached without a lawyer, without a witness, without an ability to confront the, those against him. And the trial record was a complete joke, hearsay upon hearsay and we've opened Pandora's box to future presidents. And if you use this model, I don't know how Kamala Harris doesn't get impeached if the Republicans take over the House because she actually bailed out rioters and one of the rioters went back to the streets and broke somebody's head open. So we've opened Pandora's box here and I'm sad for the country. Does Donald Trump bear any responsibility for the attack on the Capitol on January 6th? Uh, no, in terms of the law, no, he bears responsibility of pushing narratives about the election that I think are not sound and not true. But this was politically protected speech. The speech on January the 6th was not an incitement to violence. Every politician has used the word fight, fight hard. So I don't think that he caused the riot. His behavior after the election was over the top. There was a pre-planned element to this attack. Uh, um, Mr. Wallace, that we need to look at. Did Nancy Pelosi, Pelosi know on January the 5th that there was a threat to the Capitol? What did President Trump do after the attack? We need a 9-11 commission to find out what happened to make sure it never happens again. And I want to make sure that uh, the Capitol footprint uh, can be better defended next time. So I want to look at what Pelosi knew when she knew it, what President Trump did after the attack. And on the Senate side, was Senate leadership informed of a threat? So there was a pre-planned element to this attack, totally unconnected with the speech. Well, and I thought the, the well, managers let, let me, failed miserably in making the case. Let, let, let's pick up on... So I played you a fairly lengthy clip there because I wanted to give you some context. Not only does Lindsey Graham suggest that they have to impeach Harris, which we'll get into, but he also says Donald Trump did nothing wrong legally, which is actually bigger Trump hackery, bigger tr Trump goonery than even Mitch McConnell. Mitch McConnell voted against conviction, but then at the end at least said, look, I don't think under the grounds of this procedure I can vote guilty, but he could still face criminal charges and he could still face civil charges and he hasn't gotten away with anything yet. And so at least rhetorically is acknowledging it's not unreasonable to think Donald Trump will be criminally or civilly liable for th some of the things he's done while president, including related to events on January 6th and his big lie. But Lindsey Graham is like, Trump did nothing wrong legally. He has no legal responsibility. He said he might have some broad philosophical responsibility, 
but no legal responsibility, either under impeachment or civil cases or criminal cases. Absolutely bonkers. But the real piece de resistance here is how he suggests that Kamala Harris needs to be impeached, all because she supposedly bailed out some rioters when that didn't happen. What Kamala Harris did was actually a damn good thing. And I'm not always a big praiser of Harris. She's far too neoliberal for me. But this was a good thing she did over the last summer. She tweeted out a link to a bail fund in Minnesota. It's the Minnesota Freedom Fund, and it basically exists to help people that are held indefinitely in jails, innocent people who are awaiting trial, but because they do not have the cash or people that are willing to sign for them or whatever, they're held in jail indefinitely until their trial. They can't get out because they can't cover their bail. Whereas a lot of richer people could get out at least until their trial and they could live free until convicted. And so some of that money was used to bail out people involved in the protests, many of whom I would suggest were arrested without any just cause because the vast, vast, vast majority of them were peaceful, but it also helped other people. And the fact of the matter is, even if some of these people do end up being guilty, it is an act of social justice to bail people out because until they are convicted, no one should be locked up without a real, real reason. And the vast majority of these cash bail situations involve poor and racialized people held indefinitely while richer and whiter people actually do get a fair day in court. And so Kamala Harris was right to do that. There is no comparison between Harris tweeting out a link to a social justice bail fund and Donald Trump directly sicking his thugs his goons on the Capitol. There is no comparison. Lindsey Graham is rocketing up the list of worst U.S. senators. There's a lot of ghouls on the Republican side. Even, even people like Mitt Romney are truly awful in so many ways, and they, and they actually voted to impeach. But Lindsey Graham and his stubborn insistence that Donald Trump did nothing wrong and that Kamala Harris deserves to be impeached is probably now in the top five worst Republican senators in terms of his sheer evil and his sheer groveling to Donald Trump. It's desperation. I don't know if Trump has something on him, but this is something to keep in mind because they are going to try to impeach Harris or Biden or whoever they can. It's going to happen. Marjorie Taylor Greene on her like second day as a congresswoman filed articles of impeachment against Biden. I don't expect that to get anywhere, but it would not surprise me for an absolute BS reason to see Joe Biden impeached the second the Republicans take back the House, let's say in 2022, if they end up doing it. It's going to happen. And it's going to be driven by this idea that, you know, uh, the attack on Trump was politically motivated when it really wasn't. Donald Trump deserved to be impeached and he should have been convicted, especially the second time. There's no comparison between Harris tweeting out a good link and Donald Trump sicking his thugs. If you think there is, you got to screw loose.